I think someday we'll look back on this and be like, just do you remember the time that you were covered in maxi pads and gauze because you had such severe poison oak and you were just losing? I've got so much hot tea, <laughs> boiling tea. I packed up. I'm not going back tomorrow. Listen, it was so bad that it is funny to me. But when you have people lying, <laughs> it's hard to be like, oh, that's that's a scam. We're signing up for a scam. <laughs> we had three sales today. Like, that's what we're dealing with right now. I heard that they didn't lock the doors last night and there were kids in there uh, messing with things. Everyone's like, it's gonna be packed and there's gonna be like 100,000 people coming in. I have yet to see that. It is market day. Hopefully you can see me. The sun is shining bright on me. We just got to the menu. I already set up yesterday. It took like three hours, but I was like relaxed though. Uh, and I had a new setup. I'm alive. Um, that's how the week has been going. Things are going. Um, I think someday we'll look back on this and be like, do you remember the time that you were covered in maxi pads and gauze because you had such severe poison oak and you were just oozing uh yeah that's how we're doing i'm not happy about my outfit because we had to be in something very casual and baggy because of all the bandage <laughs> i do see that my maxi pads on my arm are sticking out and i'm wearing i said this in my last vlog but i'm wearing them because it's been the most like uh money saving and absorbing option is using maxi pads and surgical like a uh, waterproof tape. So, yep, I'm gonna have to get inside though because I have some things I still need to put out and I just need to like get settled. The goal for this market is the table fee was like $154. So I want to at least double or triple that. I'm gonna say my personal goal is gonna be like 800 for the three days, <laughs> but I don't know this. I don't, I have no idea. This has been a very weird experience with like the event itself and the lack of communication. So I'm like, I don't know how well organized it is. It seems to be like being here and here, like there's a bunch of people working it. So I guess there's people camping right now. We'll just have to see. I'll, I'll see meet you guys inside. You may have some history, but we don't have to repeat it. You made this mess and left me with the pieces.
vlog <laughs> show earlier, like a, a rapper, I think they called it a gangster bulldog dog show. <laughs> I really wanted to see it, but uh, I missed it because I couldn't, the marketing is just really weird here. Everything's just really weird, um, but the bulldogs are still walking around outside. They're very cute, so I don't have little outfits on. I'll try to get photos of them this weekend if they're still here. But so far I have zero footage. We did see Batman, um, and that will be in here. He's always just traveling around Richmond. Just what he does for fun is dress up in a Batman outfit. Um, I enjoy seeing him. I always wait. It is, what time is it? 6.24, so we had three, <laughs> so bad. We had three sales today. It ends at 7. It's, like I said, 624. Everyone around us is pretty much at home. But, um, <laughs> it's like, there's still people walking around. And the doors aren't locked. I'm not leaving. And they're supposed to lock at 7. So hopefully that's the case. My neighbor went home home. So, and the neighbor next to me also went home home. I just, I don't trust it. I don't trust it at all. So they better lock the doors. But anyways, three sales. It took three and a half hours to get my first sale. So if you want to know how I'm doing today, it's not great. <laughs> it's just like there's not many people. It's just a very different atmosphere than the markets I've been to. But we'll see if it picks up. It's for the eclipse that's on Monday, so I'm hoping it gets busier as the weekend goes. So Sunday's tomorrow, it's Saturday right now. And it's 11 to 7 every day, but I can't imagine people are gonna stay until 7 on Monday. Unless they just like can't get out and see traffic. I have done many beads. I have been doing strawberries because we sold out of them from TikTok this week, which is amazing, but also like, it's a bestseller, so I wanted to get them restocked, but then I ran out of my little jump rings, and no one, I live in an area where I, Hobby Lobby's a mile from me, Joanne's is half a mile from me, and none of them have the size I need, and I need it to be the same, because I need it to be consistent, because obviously, like if you sell stuff, that's what you need. So I have an order from Amazon and I have never used that brand and it's coming today. So I'm hoping it's the right one. Otherwise, like I'm going to be another couple days out from being able to actually make any more bookmarks. We're down to like 30, I think, which is low for me. I, I had like 100 a day and they all sold, which is great, right? It's great, especially with this market being so dead, right? at least right now. like. He needed that TikTok nail. <laughs> I do have my Troy market on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I really think that's gonna do well. And it's just a different kind of atmosphere again. I didn't show you my outfit, so I need to show you guys. I do an outfit of the day. Um, <laughs> I did a bandage changing. My mom showed up uh, for a few hours. So I went to the bathroom and changed out that bandage, which feels so much better now. If any of you have ever like dealt with a wound or like always an oak and like have oozy goosies from again wounds or always an oak or I um, you will know that wound like the changing of the bandages like is a necessity and you should do it frequently. So I felt very dirty doing it in a public bathroom. So, needless to say, I need a hot shower. And Randy's making some chili dogs, which I'm also excited for. <laughs> I haven't done a walkthrough. I haven't shown you my booth yet, but I'll do that in the morning tomorrow when people are up and running. Because I feel stupid at this point showing you guys booths that are closed down strangely. Again, it's an open air. There are doors open everywhere, and people are like from that are at the festival are just coming in. I don't understand why people leave. Hey there. Let me know if you have any questions.
just sorting my beads because I I am making my strawberry charms, but I didn't realize because I just have my travel little case, I didn't bring the right um, pens to actually make that one. I made a bunch of Sophie's today, which is my cherry. <coughs> she's one of my newer ones, um, and she's just adorable. I sold, I guess, I told you guys I had two sales. I sold an anxious sweatshirt with my coping skills line, and I sold a dog bookmark, which is so cute, and a... Oh, a custom bookmark. I was like, why can't I think of it? It's because it's uh, not my, I mean, it's my design, but it's not. Uh, someone else designed it at my booth. Because I have a tri bar now, which is so cool. I don't think that my signage is like, no matter what I do with my bookmarks, people never know that they're bookmarks. I literally have books set up with them in them. It's my display. And still people don't know what they are. And so, and I even have like, um, I have signs that say bookmarks too. You will see it. Um, but the amount of people that still do not know what it is. I don't know what else to do. I truly don't know what else I can do. But I need to do something. I think I just need to, I have been, um, I have been with a few people that are here just telling them, hey, <laughs> the cute dangly things are bookmarks. So it's just a verbal. And then I can just say hi, you know? What I normally do when people come in is I smile. <laughs> it's like the introvert. Um, pardon me. No, and then uh, just say if you have any questions, you know. But I think my new phrase will be, if you have any questions, let me know. And the long, pretty dangly things are bookmarks just in case um, you have any questions on those. <laughs> that seems a little long. I'll shorten it, but I'll figure it out. All right, I am going to show you my booth and do an outfit. Of the day. Breaking news, we just got our fourth seal. We sold a strawberry tumbler charm. And I also sold um, a dress from my neighbor's booth for my neighbor. <laughs> oh yeah, I was gonna show <laughs> I was gonna show you guys an outfit of the Well, it's actually not that bad. It seems like it's kind of getting a little more crowded. And when I say a little more crowded, there's people in here. So, we're not dead. And it closes in 15 minutes, so. Curious, curious, curious. All right, I'm gonna end the vlog, not the vlog. I'm gonna end my market day today with you, and we'll pick back up tomorrow morning. Bye. Day two is here. Um, today I had to wear jeans because all my other sweatpants that weren't dirty showed my bandages through. So we're going to be a little uncomfy and my bandages are still showing through and you can actually see pads, which is a little disturbing. So I brought some tape to try to tape over it. I'll show you guys. It's really weird. Oh. Like that's what we're dealing with right now. I'm here 15 minutes early. I just need to go in and like take some covers off and move some things around, but for the most part, we're good. I ended the day yesterday with five sales. So when I got off with you guys, it was almost over. And I told you everyone was already, like vendors were already gone and leaving. Um, and I was, so this is the weird part and like concerning part. I was the last one there because I wanted to wait until everyone was out all the shoppers not like the vendors like i don't care about like they're i don't think they're gonna touch anything but the shoppers the shoppers were still in there they closed the main door they didn't close the side doors which is where like vendors were leaving from and so shoppers were still coming in and i was the very last one in there and there were still shoppers in there and as i was walking out they were walking out now i did not for sure see them leave but they seemed like i talked to them they actually bought something from my neighbor's booth which i um ended up covering for her she left early so i i got her a sale got her many sales actually and by many i mean two um i feel like i need a little commission there uh but there were still people in there that's 
like I'm so worried I took photos everything because my one vendor like in front of me was like I took photos everything because I heard that they didn't lock the doors last night and there were kids in there uh, messing with things because there was a honey guy that has been camping right outside of the uh, building we're in and he said he could hear like late at night kids in there just like throwing things I don't think that any of my stuff was touched I didn't at least notice anything so we'll see who knows but it's been very very disorganized at least in the vendor section so today is Sunday I do see some campers I just don't know if they're like vendors that are camping this place <laughs> everyone's like it's gonna be packed and there's gonna be like a hundred thousand people coming in I haven't yet to see that because like I said we had five sales yesterday we had two sweatshirt sales I had one someone get my first um Kim what was it called? Uh, <laughs> Kim People Are Dying sweatshirt. I only had made two because I'm like, I don't know how this will do. Um, and a girl came in and bought it and she like was obsessed with it and was laughing. Uh, so that made my day. So I had the two sweatshirt sales, two bookmark sales, and two Stanley Charm sales. So technically I have six fingers up, but um, one of them was a bookmark and a Stanley Charm. So those five, five sales. I made a hundred and like eight ish dollars. I have a tracker on my phone. So we still need to make like 50 to cover the booth fee today, which I think we can do just with how slow yesterday was and still making that money. I think today we should be able to cover the booth. So let's go in because I only have 10 minutes left to get everything ready. But again, there's not going to be anyone here this morning. I'm going to try to get breakfast too. And my mom's going to bring me a chai. So let's do this. home uh, I've got so much hot tea 
<laughs> boiling tea. I packed up. I'm not going back tomorrow. I ended it, the, it was a three day market, ended at two days. Did I ever think I would say that? Absolutely not, absolutely not. But everything happening at the market, there was no way, like I did not want my stuff there. <laughs> I do not want people stealing my stuff. I, I won't get into it, but oh my goodness. <sighs> Dare I say, this is the worst market experience I've been to. I have, I'm gonna preface that by saying right now, I did not lose money. I did not. Just the experience of the market, <laughs> the, the negative energy in that building from everyone. Like I felt so bad for everyone because I'm local. I didn't drive there um, just like spending money on gas. I didn't spend money on hotels. I feel I, it's not my worst experience, uh, but it was bad. <laughs> so, flashback to Polaris Mall. Yeah, I will get into that <laughs> tomorrow because I'm free. And um, up I didn't do an outfit of the day. I'm just wearing basically the same outfit that I wore to Rheingeist. Um, so, yeah, my bandage did fall off my leg. So, we are just, I did. Um, I'm bleeding in a few areas. Sorry, it's gross. My arm bandage stayed secure though. Hopefully tomorrow I don't have to wear bandages at all. I can just use the spray and be fine. Um, but yeah, I just wanted to pop in here, update you. I'm home, it's like 8 p.m. and I'm gonna shower here in a few minutes and just like relax. I got a couple online orders today, makes up for some of the negative energy happening around the whole market um, yeah yeah it was an experience it was <laughs> an experience I don't know what else to say um, anyhow I'm getting off here and I will see you very soon bye <gasps> that it is funny to me. And I say that as someone who did not travel to go to this and did not spend money on a hotel and did not spend money on gas, um, I think it's, like I'm finding humor in it at this point. I know that a lot of people that went to this do not find humor in it because I feel absolutely horrified for those that traveled from Utah. Yeah, I bought some other stuff um, from like Michigan. So many people and no, so many uh, vendors traveled to this that I like, I can't imagine. I can't imagine being in a position where you spend over a thousand dollars just to get to this place and have what happened happen. So, with all of that being said, when I'm laughing, it's because to me, that's my way of uh, coping with things. And this is not like, it's not, it's something that happens other places, I'm sure. Um, and especially being someone that did not do their due diligence and do your research that I always like, like do as I say, don't do as I do type thing. Um, this could have been avoided by all of us. Um, but when you have people lying, <laughs> it's hard to be like, oh, that's, that's a scam. We're signing up for a scam. <laughs> okay, anyways, let's get into it. This was a three-day market. I'm also gonna be packing orders, so that's what's happening. Um, this was a three-day market, Saturday through Monday, Monday being the eclipse and it was held at my county fairgrounds where I live. Um, so again, didn't have to travel for it. And it was 154 doll hairs. So around $50 a day, a little more than that, which actually isn't that bad. So um, that part wasn't weird. It, <laughs> this is where like I already felt shady about it. The website for it was like, I put it together, but like 
a worse version of myself put it together. Like, I don't know how to build websites, and I for sure would have built a better one. Um, every photo was a stock photo. There was no actual real photo of anything. Um, like, when I say stock photos, it truly had, you know those stock photos of, like, a lady in a business suit pointing to a board, like a whiteboard? It had one of those on it saying that it was gonna be educational. Um, it had a photo of campers on a lake. We don't have a lake. So could they have picked a more realistic stock photo? Absolutely. Um, the website and on Facebook, I found it on Facebook. The website and Facebook said that they had already confirmed over 20, like 5,000 people that were coming to it. Um, and that all the camp spots were already like almost full and like they, they lie. Like it was a blatant lie, all of it, which is why we had vendors showing up from Utah and from, um, like we had people coming from Washington and just like the crazy far away places expecting this to be as they advertise the biggest festival in the country for the eclipse randomly in my town, which is why like I felt weird showing up. So like, why are people traveling here? This is not a tourist destination, but they said, and, then, and actually a news um, article even said, I think the news article might have read the, the event page, saying that there were gonna be 100,000 people traveling to our area. I think by our area, they just meant like the Midwest. <laughs> So yeah, I'm sure there were that many people. Uh, <laughs> little did I know, like literally 60 miles away, William Shatner was giving a speech at a festival. Like that's the one I should have went to. But I digress. Um, yeah, so that is already like the big concern. And so we show up on Thursday for setup. Mind you, they didn't send out any information at all until like 10 hours before saying, hey, you can show up on Thursday, um, or sorry, Friday, between 11 and five. Like that's your setup time. They never told us anything about parking, about um, when we could actually show up to the show every day, like Saturday, Sunday, Monday, none of that, no communication. I never, I met one person there that was like maybe running the show, I don't even know. Um, and so I set up Friday. I had no idea when to show up on Saturday of like when the doors would be unlocked. So I just showed up because at that point I was already set up um, and I got in, but they never told us that, none of that. Um, so Saturday happens. It took three and a half hours to get my first sale. Um, if you wanna give an idea of like the foot traffic of the event, of this 25,000 um, person event, I, I have nothing to compare it to. It has been by far the slowest event I have ever been to. Like I literally think the first day was really only vendors that I saw walking around, like other vendors. The first day, and they were only, in, in, the, in the vendor artesian building, there were only probably 20 of us in there to begin with. By the first day, um, about a quarter of them have already packed up and left. The food vendors were supposed to be a food rally. Uh, they were also leaving. One of them got stuck actually in the mud. He was so mad. He like store in the middle of the day, the first day, he just like left with his food truck and got stuck in a field because he like drove across the field instead of using the drive. Um, and he had to pay a ton of money for a tow truck. So <sighs> second day, um, which was Sunday, I was like, I hope this is better. It was a tiny bit better foot traffic because they did have a helicopter that was dropping eggs into a field for little kids. And so I got a couple more sales, um, but here's where it gets real bad. So what I didn't realize at first on Sunday is after Saturday, so like this festival had lined up all of these bands and all of these activities. Um, just went like wild with like what they were having come. They had a dog show, they had like 12 live bands. They had a band travel from LA to come. It was a cover band for like 
Led Zeppelin or something. I don't remember, but after Saturday when no one showed up to the festival, they canceled everything. They canceled everything. All the bands, like they canceled the activities and they started posting on their Facebook, um, we can't afford to uh, have this event anymore um, and pay these people to come because no one showed up and we're already out $10,000 just for um, renting out the fairground. I didn't realize this was just an individual that saw a money opportunity, rented the fairground, wasn't an organization, wasn't a company. I thought my town was sponsoring it. I thought they were putting it on. Nope, it was just a money hungry person that thought they would make a big buck and it didn't turn out that way clearly because one, there wasn't advertising anywhere. <laughs> I'm heated because I'm so upset. There was just so much layered into this. Not even the fact that like our stuff was tampered with. <laughs> they didn't lock the dang doors. I think I'd mentioned that in, on Saturday morning being like, um, or sa Sunday morning being like, they didn't lock the doors. People were telling us, the vendors that were camping there um, told us that they were hearing like kids inside the um, art area just like throwing shit around. I was pissed. So Saturday, so Sunday night, so two, after two days, I was like, I'm not coming back on Monday. I'm already like extremely dis disgusting. I'm leaking. I'm in pain. I have like poison oak covering my entire body now um, because it's spreading at this point again. And I'm not dealing with this. Monday's activities were already canceled. I was not happy. Um, but at the end of the day, I made enough sales where my booth was covered. Did I lose money? Yeah, I definitely had left, like lost money because materials, you didn't factor that in. Time, um, my boredom should have definitely cost more. <laughs> um, I'm gonna tell you what sold. It's easy because I only had nine sales total for 16 hours of working. Um, let me get this. Oh. Hold on, I need to pause real quick um, because Asher's getting upset and his animal crackers have now been scattered everywhere. Day one, Saturday. I made $68 in cash and $45 in card with a total of five sales. I sold an embroidered sweatshirt, a custom bookmark, a dog bookmark, a crime cup, and a Stanley charm and an anxious sweatshirt, my coping skills. So I guess I sold six items, five sales. So I had someone buy two things. And then day two, I made $10 in cash and whatever the rest was in cards. I made a total from the two days, $146. Oh, I guess I didn't. No, I didn't calculate. So one, two, I made like 146 was 117. What is that? made $263. So I made my booth fee. I probably actually might have made like, I probably broke even. Actually, now that I'm thinking about it, I probably broke around even, um, maybe. But that's not counting in like, I had um, lunches and I spent $67 in like miscellaneous like food and then I bought spices from someone, um, the Utah person. So, the second day I sold an embroidered Kim sweatshirt and then an embroidered frog sweatshirt. That was from the same person. A crime cup, two strawberry charms, a sale a pouch, and then a custom bookmark and a crime tumbler. No, a regular tumbler. So I made five sales that day. So a few people bought a couple of things at a time. So anyways, yeah, I made a total of 263, um, which in one day is like, I'm grateful that I got that. I'm very grateful because it should have probably been a lot less than that. So yeah, that, like I haven't even told you everything that happened. I went to their Facebook page on Saturday and people were blasting them, being like, this is such a scam. This is um, like disgusting. You would have people travel from Los Angeles, from, um, just all over the country for a lie, essentially. And that's true, they did lie. Do I think that it was a scam? 
I don't think I don't think it was intended to be. I believe that they got way over their head and had no idea how to run a festival because they aren't like they've never done it before. They admitted to one of the vendors I was talking to that this is the first time they've ever done anything. And so they had no idea. They were just believing that a <laughs> um, hundred plus thousand people were coming to our area. And then all of us believed them when they said that they had 20 something thousand people confirmed to the festival. Um, the campsite, when I tell you I could see all the campers, I could see all the campers. There were 10 of them. There were nowhere near what there should have been as far as it being sold out. They put a poor mom and her kids in the parking lot to sleep. So I don't think I caught footage of this. Like where I parked every morning, legitimately within 10 feet was a tent in the middle of the parking lot. Um, they, <laughs> it was just so poorly ran because no one actually professional was running it. That's why. Um, so <laughs> that is my experience. I know I'm leaving stuff out. Like I know I am. I know a ton of people are suing them. Um, I'm not obviously <laughs> because it kind of was a scam. What like it wasn't and it was. I like I said, I do think that they thought they were gonna make a ton of money on this and they just didn't. PS I am packing one of my star tumbler charms. It is heading to Texas Fort Reese. Um thank you if you're watching by chance. This is from Etsy. The rest are from TikTok. I'm still having a lot of residual sales from a video that got like fifty thousand views on TikTok, which like doesn't sound like a ton, but it converted to a ton of sales. So I'm very grateful. Um, they did end up on Monday, because it was $5 to get in a person. They did on Monday end up just um, putting it for free. After they had fought, <laughs> I was just like having fun reading the Facebook comments. After they had fought for many uh, post people uh, saying that they couldn't, like basically just responding, they couldn't afford to have any of the people they told were supposed to come come because they couldn't pay anyone and they didn't some of the there were a few bands on saturday that played and they didn't pay them like those are the ones that are suing so anywho on monday they ended up opening it free to the public and they announced that like real late monday night i had already packed my stuff up would i have probably went knowing that like it was actually free on monday because no one was paying to come to see nothing maybe but at the end of the day, like it would just be people from my area going and they're not gonna go somewhere to watch the eclipse when they can just watch it in their backyard. Um, so that's what I ended up doing. Randy and I watched in our backyard. We had a really good time. I had a glass of wine and we just cuddled on our patio and it was very sweet. So I'm glad that I got to stay home for that. Um, do I wish I would have been in Oxford, <laughs> like I told you in a previous video, because they had announced like a day after I bought the Richmond um, booth that they invited me to a booth. Um, yeah, definitely would have loved doing that. But you live and you learn. I will never do anything like that again, ever. Not like, as I do think people you start your first event, you have to start somewhere. Is it a three day festival with like wild claims? It's not, that's not the way to do it. So those people should be ashamed of themselves. They are definitely going to be um, in court and just like in debt for sure, which sucks for them for sure. Um, and I'm not like, I'm not pressed about it, but I know a lot of people are and I feel really bad for them. So that was my experience with my first um, hometown festival. Would I do it again? Probably not. I actually thought from the people that were there, and like I said, most of the people walking by were just vendors. They weren't actual um, people from Richmond. The sales that I got, uh, I did talk, like obviously talk to them, and they were from Richmond. I did hear that there were some campers, like I said, there were like 10 campers there. They were from all over the country. I can't imagine how pissed they were. I cannot imagine how pissed they were. Um, but what I was saying is I had, um, from people walking by, a lot of, like, mean things being said. This is the first time when I just felt, like, a little uncomfortable at times with, like, people judging my stuff. 
more so in a fact of like they didn't like my prices which i feel like i have very good prices like i don't i don't know i see a lot more expensive things out there and i try to price it as low as i can to make a profit on it obviously because i'm like the one putting the work in and like buying the materials and i'm still obviously i don't know if it's obvious i'm at a loss for this like i'm still not making any money on this it's still definitely a hobby at this point um but people like i would never pay 14 dollars for a bookmark and then like walking away i'm like that's great like did you need to say that to me? Probably not. No. <laughs> I did have a funny one. I had a girl on Saturday um, show up and she's like, I'm a mama. And like she was looking at a sweater that said mama. Um, and, and then she couldn't afford the sweatshirt. And like I was like, I have a sales section. I have a few of them in there. They're like between 10 and $20. The same sweatshirt. It just has like tiny little things that are off with it. My embroidery machine. Um, and she scurried away um and then she came back the next day with her boyfriend and she's like i want the mama sweatshirt and so she's like i need an extra small i just like i don't unfortunately sell extra smalls but i do have a small and it will fit you uh it definitely would have fit her <laughs> and i got it out and she's like okay um okay i'll take this in black and i'm like i well i only have it in this color um i'm like looking around like there's literally nothing black in my booth and then uh, she scurried away, <laughs> like before I could respond of like anything else. She scurried. It was so weird. She was very like skittish, and her boyfriend's still standing there. And he was like, "I was gonna pay for it," <laughs> and then he went after her. So that was my funny, I guess, of the weekend. I'm excited. I have my Troy Market on Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and. It truly cannot get worse than what this one was. It truly can't, right? Unless like a fire starts. Um, oh my gosh, don't put that into the world. So, yeah, um, I hope you enjoyed the vlog. <laughs> I would love to know, if you have any of those like crazy experiences for your shows, please comment them so I can like just join in your misery. <laughs> It's a live and you learn, and I learned, and I lived, so. There's not much else I can say. Please subscribe if you're not already. It helps me out tremendously with the algorithm, and then you'll be notified of all my videos and be on the lookout for many more market vlogs in the future with happier news to share. All right, thank you for watching. I'll see you very, very soon.